Hi guys, I have been showing you almost everything I know about the 2018 CNC series. There is only one thing left, is the limit switches that will prevent the machine from going out of boundaries and that is the stepper motors uh, or the frame of the machine. You can also use those switches as homing switches that also will solve the problem of the G28 G code lines. I'm giving away this machine to a friend who will have more use of it than myself since uh, I already have a much better machine. Because of that, I will try to find a quick and dirty way to put those limit switches on and then I can uninstall them cleanly later. So let's get started with the Y axis. Before installing those switches on the frame, I think that you should solder some wire on them first, the normally open pin and the common pin. Make sure that the wires are long enough so we can arrange them nicely along the frame. Now I have the wire soldered on the pin, I just bend them a little bit. For the Y axis, I made this piece. I cut a strip of aluminum, I bend it 90 degree, made two holes here. I thread them with the M6 tab and I will use two of the M6 bolts to fix this to the platform. I just going to flip this machine up. I will try to slide this side with the two holes in the middle slot of the bed here. I think that I made this side a bit too long, it's really hard to slide in here. So I think I will have to loosen the bed a little bit. I just slide the bed a bit on the side. Slide this side in here. Recenter the bed. and retighten the bolts for the bed. Now we will adjust this side of the angled aluminum. You will leave very little space in between this piece and this piece of our aluminum extrusion. And then fix the piece with the M6 bolt. And that's it, just make sure that these two pieces don't touch so we can move the y-axis smoothly. Yeah, like this it's going to be fine. Now I will move the y-axis all the way up here until this edge of the bearing block touch this bracket of the frame. Now it touched, you cannot move the axis anymore. You move it down a little bit, maybe give it one millimeter. Take the limit switch. Press it against this edge and push it down until it click and you will try to keep it in this position. I will glue it with some hot glue gun. You just hold it in place until the glue get cooled. Like this, it's really sturdy now. I can move the Y axis back down and finish gluing. That's it for the first limit switch on the Y axis. I will do the same for the one at the back. I, I prefer to use the same color code for all the switches like the black wire for the common pin and the red wire for the normally open pin. Now I have the switches on the Y axis. That makes sure that when you move the Y axis, the limit switch have to click before you reach the end of the axis.
I just adjust this place so it hit the middle of the wheel. Just to make sure that I don't get confused with the wiring from the other axis, I will finish connecting the Y axis to the control board first. I just grab all the wires and tape them together. Okay, so here I just measure the wire, make sure that they are long enough, and I will trim them around here. I will trim two of the wire a bit shorter. And on this one, I just open in the middle. And leave some space like this. Same on this one. Okay, these two wire I check on to strip the tip. This red wire I can wrap around the space of this red wire. Same thing with the black wire. I will take a little piece of red wire and black wire, strip one end, and wrap them in here too. Now I will solder everything together. I prepare these two little pieces of wire because later on if the limit switch doesn't work properly it will be because of the noise and with these two wires here it will be very easy to add on the noise filter. Now I can use some heat sink to cover this or I can just use some electrical tape. Next step, the best way to connect this wire to the controller board is a 2 pin female Nippon connector. If you want to make real nice professional connectors, I recommend to use some type of flyer like this. You only need to put the connector in here, close it a little bit, slide the wire in. and press it all the way now it look real nice I just slide it in here now the Y axis limit switches are ready now to the X axis I will cut two pieces of wire about like this length I take the first switch and solder the two wire on the pins This side, I will strip them a bit longer. Take two really long wires, strip this end. Twist the wire with the same colors together. Now I will put some soldering tint on both of them. Now I can trim them a bit shorter and solder them on this switch. Now I will glue these two switches on the back of the Z axis block like this. First of all, I will move this axis all the way to this side. Okay, so now it stop. I push the switch all the way in here until it clicked. 
hold it on here and glue it. I should do the same for this side, but I am a bit lazy because if I do that, I wouldn't have to loosen this controller board and push the axis all the way on this side. For me to do it quickly, I just position it about the same as this one. I will slide these two wires up here. Now I just run the wire along with the cable wrap. I will glue the wire here first. Same thing, I just measure the wire and trim them. Make an opening in the middle here. Cut two little pieces. The same thing, I will make the connector. Now to the Z-axis, I take this square piece of plywood, the side is about 20 mm, I will glue it in the middle here, and the edge here stick out from this edge a little bit. I will have to stick the limit switch about like this, press it down when it click, I will need to space this out a little bit, just to make sure that the side of the wheel doesn't hit this first. The thickness of this piece is about 6mm, so I will put something thinner here uh, with the thickness of about 2 or 3mm. That makes sure that it stick out here enough, so when the axis move all the way to this side, it doesn't hit this bracket. Now I will solder the wire first before I glue them on here. I will do the same thing as I did for the x-axis. Now I will move the z-axis all the way up until it gets stuck. Then I will move it down a little bit like one millimeter like this. Take the switch here, push it down until it click. Hold it in place and glue it. I will do the same thing for this side. Now I will do the same thing. I will arrange these two wires along with the cable wrap. And I will make the connector the same way. Now look at the controller board here. I saw that there's actually six slots to plug in the six limit switches, two for each axis, and I'm sure that the two slots for each axis are connected because the limit switches 
uh, for each axis are parallel and instead of plugging each axis separately I will make a 6 pin connector like this uh, so I can plug them in all at once now I'm just going to take the wire out from this 2 pin connector and put them in here This is only my way of doing things that I prefer the common pin on the limit switch will be on the bottom row of the connector and now the connector is kind of directional the side here at the edge that have empty slot will be the z-axis side the one that doesn't have empty slot will be the x-axis so I will plug in like this and that's it I have all the limit switches installed and connected to the controller board now I will connect the machine to the computer and tell the controller board that I have the axis activated here in the console I will type in double dollar sign dollar 21 is the hard limit and right now it is zero that means that it will deactivate it now I will activate it by typing dollar 21 equal 1 and check again double dollar sign to make sure okay now the limit switch are on I will move the axis until it hit the edge and hopefully the machine will stop when the limit switch click there's a message here reset to continue that means that if I want to continue I would have to click reset so I click on reset and there's an alarm here so that means that the limit switch is hit so let's see if I can uh, move it back no I cannot uh, I think that I will have to click on unlock too now I will move it this way yeah now the limit switch is unclicked there's another message just reset to continue so I click on reset uh, there's still error I will click again on unlock and jog okay now I can move it out so the limit switch worked I will test on the Z axis and the Y axis move it down first ok the limit switch just clicked and there's another message reset to continue I click on reset unlocked jog it up I will have to do reset unlock again and move it up and that's it now let's try the upper limit it's click, it stop again cannot move up cannot move down so reset unlock move down it stop reset unlock and move down again it works perfectly let's try the Y axis you don't so click and stop and we reset unlocked move it back same thing and that's it I think that the limit switches are working fine now I will show you how to configure the homing cycle so now I'm just going to type in double dollar sign to enable the homing you will have to change the dollar 22 to 1 dollar 23 is the direction mask I will explain it to you later dollar, dollar 24 is the feed rate for the final homing $25 is the feed rate for the fast homing 
That means that the machine will move fast to find the homing switch. Once it's fired, it, it will bounce back at the value of the 27 is 1 millimeter, and then it will move back in very slowly at the feed rate of 25 millimeter set by dollar 24. I will set dollar 27 to 5 millimeter just to test. Dollar 22 equal 1, dollar 27 equal 5. One more thing, the dollar 130, 131, 132, I would have to change them to the corresponding value of the x axis, y axis, and z axis. Dollar 130 equal 300. This is the maximum moving range for the x axis, it should be 300 millimeter. And that's it, let's see how the machine home. Let's see how the machine got to home. The Z axis move all the way up, the limit switch clicked, but the stepper model kept trying to move the Z axis up and it lost a step. I think that there's some problem here. Let me just do some research to see what's wrong. I found one article on the forum and they said that the problem might come from the interference with the wires so I should add the noise filter as I told you before so let me just show you how to do that you can look for the diagram how to connect the filter on the internet all you need to search gerbil limit switch configuration then you can see how to connect the filter we need three registers uh, between 1k to 4.7k I have 2k so that will be in the middle range and you will also need three of the capacitor 100 nanofarad. I will start with the X axis. I will strip the wire that I prepared before. I will take one of the register. I will show the one pin of the register to the one pin of the capacitor. Okay, this is the Y axis. It doesn't matter. I'm going to start with the Y axis. Now the pin just has the register and the capacitor. I will solder it to the wire that is on the top row. The other side of the capacitor, I will solder it to the wire that is on the lower row. I will leave this side of the resistor here like this for now. I will continue with the Y axis and the Z axis. When I said I will continue with the Y axis and Z axis, I mean X axis and the Z axis. Now we'll cover this soldering part with some tape. Now we have the three ends of the resistors, we just put them together like this and we solder them to a piece of wire. This side of the wire, I will make a connector for it, like two pins, but I only use one side and I will connect that side to a 5 volt pin on the controller board. Now I have the filters installed, let's see how it works. I will click on the home button again. As you can see that it didn't work even though I added the filter on. So I think that the problem was not the noise. And I did spend more than one hour trying everything. Even take out the wires here away from the stepper model cable to reduce the noise and everything. But the result still the same. And what I did is that I also changed the configuration in gerbil firmware. I changed the homing cycle, make the machine only home one axis at a time, 
And what I found out is that only the homing on the Y axis were working. I also checked all the wiring and everything and everything was correct. So I don't know what happened. At this point I was ready to give up. I took a break, but I just go out and take a walk. Then suddenly I think that I found the problem. I think that on the controller board, uh, they marked the Z axis limit switch at the place of the X axis and vice versa. And now I found a way to check if my theory is correct. I will use universal G-code sender or universal G-code platform. In here, let me just show you quickly. So this is universal G-code platform. I go to machine, set up wizard. Well, it's connected to Jervo. I actually even downgrade my firmware to 1.1F to test, but it didn't work. Uh, I just skip everything uh, until limit switches. I click on enable limit switches and then you can manually trigger the limit switch to see which one is actually like triggered. I put this here so you can see. So now I trigger the one on the Z axis. And the X axis limit switch here in the software lined up. So my theory is actually correct. And now I check on the X axis. And the Z axis limit switch lined up. So now I'm just going to reverse the wire for the X and Z axis. And afterward I'm sure that it will work. So now the wires for the X axis and Z axis are reversed. Let me just check again with the universal GCO sender. Okay, now I try the Z axis. Yes, so now it's right. Okay, so everything is correct now. So let me just try to run the home menu again. I will close this and open candle. Now I will click on home. And that's it, the machine homed. I'm happy now. Next step, I will generate a G-code file with Fusion 360 without deactivating the G28 lines and see how it works. Uh, I will create something really simple. I only create this pocket with 0.5mm depth so I just only cut this pocket and you can see that the cut will be really simple and fast so let me just export this Right click, post process, and here in safe retract, I click on this, change this to G28, and post. And here I will uh, save it. Now let's see if the G code cut correctly. The X and Y zero will be right here.
Perfect, everything worked correctly. Now I will show you one last thing about the homing, it's the Dollar 23. This configuration is to choose where you want to home. For example, right now you home the X-axis on this side, but if you want to home it on this side, I will show you how to do that with the Dollar 23. I will show you quickly the gerbil configuration. So the Dollar 23 is a homing direction invert mask. I just click on it. Okay. It doesn't say much. It only says that you can do it with the Dollar 23. I roll up until I see this. It is the mask configuration. Right now my dollar 23 equal to zero. So it is zero zero zero. Nothing is invert. Now I want to invert the x axis here. Invert x, yes. Uh, it will be this bit change to one and the setting value will be one. So if I change the dollar 23 to one, the homing on the x axis should be revert. And if you want to revert also the y axis, revert x axis and revert y axis, it will be this one. Uh, mass is 1, 1, and the setting value will be 3. For me, I just going to change this dollar uh, twenty three to 1, and let's see how it home. Now I will type in dollar twenty three equal 1. I will move the spindle to the middle of the platform. Now I will click on home. I think that 5 mm pull up is a bit too much. As you can see now the X axis is moving this way to home. It takes forever to run 5 mm pull off. I probably will change the pull off to 2 mm. That is a lot better. Now you have those switches installed. You don't need to deactivate the G28 lines anymore. And I think that the noise filter didn't matter that much because the limit switches were working perfectly without the filter. But having the filter on definitely make me feel safer. But if you don't have resistors and capacitor in-house, I don't think that you will need to install them.